never been a girly girl. I don't often get the assumption that I'm a girly girl. That never really happens very often. What does happen, however, is a lot of people either assume I'm a lesbian or I am bisexual. Neither of which are true. And there's nothing wrong with either one. However, basing assumptions strictly on how someone presents themselves in terms of dress is extremely limiting. And the older I get, the less frequently this happens. People just instantly assume and then they're shocked when I say I'm straight. So I don't know why that's still a thing. Um, I don't really care about providing you all with sharper imagery when you can select in the bottom right hand corner of any YouTube video what type of uh, playback format you want. I enjoy using my camera phones just as much as I do when I have to use my uh, actual DSLR but there's established channels such as You Suck at Cooking that completely do all of their video with the phone and y'all just want to see my face better. So if it bothers you that much, you can always just click in the right hand side and take it from 420 all the way up to whatever it is you need. But I use the technology that allows for it. Couldn't care less about lighting. This only looks good right now because I'm standing in front of the window and it's not raining. Like, I can't stress to you all enough how much I don't care about that because what you come for in terms of content is the delivery of what I'm presenting you and not what I look like. The facade can change. I could step out of this house and get my entire face screwed up and whatnot, but the audio of the content still resonates with whoever is listening. So that's much more important to me than you being able to see me clearly. I could be pixelated for all I care, as long as what I have to say still comes off with the right tone to let you know that I do what I want. I do not keep up with everything in K-pop. This is not something that was always the case. I used to, but after stepping down from being the editor-in-chief of the magazine I helped establish, it's not as necessary. I can take more energy to focus on the things that I appeal to the most and being able to listen to a lot more content to be able to present it on the other YouTube channel that's getting ready to debut. However, the thing that I'm presented with the most is people like to send me DMs about stuff involving GOT7. I always know what's going on with them all the time. All the time you don't have to you don't ever have to question I always know what is going on with my boys because I will always keep up with them in the same way that I've kept up with them since debut it's not changing I got seven forever I'm not tall I don't know why any of you would make this assumption I am 5'4 which for most intents and purposes that's average height <laughs> To some people that still might not be average, they would preference to say five six, but I am five foot four inches. And I think it's my presence that makes people feel that I'm so much taller than I am because when they see me and they go, oh, and then they have to look down, you're so small. I'm very compact. Um, I don't have a very round body. I never have. I gain all of my weight right within the midsection from neck down all the way to hips is usually where I am most largest. But I've always had an extremely athletic build, thanks in part to genetics and the fact that I did dance and sports during the physical formative years of my life. Um, I have been strength being skinny before, olive oil-esque. But for the most part, I've always had a very, very massive leg mass. Like, it looks like I'm about to just go kick a wall in, which I might. And um, I'm extremely top heavy. I do not have very large hips, but I do have a huge posterior. So I do have an S shape. I ain't signed up for it. Took a very long time to embrace it, but um, it's here now. So it is what it is. And in my this part of my life I'm much more better about trying to take care of it than usual that I just call a whole bunch of people my siblings now here in the, the in the world of black folk you know everybody is your cousin and whatnot and I do have friends who I'm very close with who I call cousins I call their parents auntie uncle 
um, and things of that sort. But I, I really do, no lie, have a lot of siblings, y'all. I really and truly do. Uh, it's because my parents remarried and my father has had relationships with other women uh, long term and or marriage where children have come from that. So I really do have a lot of half siblings, <laughs> a crap load of them, all girls. I have no brothers. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot there that I'm jaded about relationships. Not in the least bit. On occasion, I have moments where I question what the hell I decided to do in my 20s and uh, late 20s for that matter. But I'm not jaded about love or anything of the sort. Um, I, I think it always wins. And I think the harder people try to run from it or try to compartmentalize and say, all women want is somebody who gonna pay for all their bills or all men or crap and da 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 those absolutions are extremely unfair yeah there's a large quantity of people who fit that mold but to absolutely say bar none this is fact 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 that's not fair and that limits people from opening their heart to interacting with others love is not just for who you are intimately physically intimately involved with but who you are also emotionally intimately involved with you should take care of your your friendships some close friendships can become family you should take care of your work related relationships familial relationships and then those with someone who is not of your family um who you are just getting to know and take into your life in that same regard so no i'm not jaded by love at all uh really wish people would not think that now i am annoyed by it being like i'm annoyed by those whose love language is like outward displays of affection <laughs> like oh that's, that shit is exhausting but i don't see any issues with it whatsoever so no i'm not some old calloused heart woman about stuff like that there really is just a handful of things that i will break down and cry about i'm not a very big deal crier um, that doesn't mean that I don't hurt and don't feel things and, and don't celebrate with tears. I often do. When uh, loved ones achieve something that I know they've been working extremely hard towards, it almost always makes me cry because I'm so excited for their achievement. Puppies, I can't, I don't, they're just so cute. I don't know why I am this way about dogs, but I am. Um house renovation videos like do you remember in america extreme home makeover and then like on youtube there is house h-o-u-z-z -Z, which is uh executive produced by ashton kutcher and just uh, home means a lot of things for a lot of people so allowing someone to come into your personal space like that and and gut it and renovate it and change it to make it more accommodating and more beneficial for you that's really emotional and extremely moving for me so i do get real choked up about that i can't help it music can't even put my finger up i used to do this and i wonder when i get back to america if i'll be able to but music <laughs> um there's there's something about hearing the the sprinkling of of God's goodness into vessels, us musicians or or artists or bedroom producers, we count to being able to hear the sprinkling of that and and what it manifests. It's so beautiful. And then uh, although I'm not very big on being out in nature because I'm allergic to everything. Um, just seeing the, the beauty of life and existence and, and everything that is around us, being able to feel the, the warmth of the sun on your skin and know that it's going to rise every morning and the moon is going to rise at dusk and evening or being able to watch a flower bloom or see birds uh flying and whatnot water that isn't touched by humanity and things of that sort um mother nature needs to be revered and loved and valued um 
the universe, everything, the things that we're doing to the earth and whatnot, it's, it's heart wrenching. Um, but even in all of that ugliness, earth will find a way with or without us humans. <laughs> so to know that we, we live just for the short amo amount of time, you know, on something that is living and breathing in and of itself and doesn't need us. It's just, it's, it's extremely glorious. It's very, very beautiful. And finally, food. I, I will, I will weep over a Cinnabon, over a donut, over a plate of pasta, over a seafood dish, over a piece of pie, over a good wholesome cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> It brings me so much joy. Food and music are ways that I've continuously said are amazing and, and uh, able to bring people together. I am proud to be an American. Disappointed in some of the socioeconomic choices of my country and uh, political decisions. But even though I've left and will return, uh, I do love home. It is home. I am not your Korea boo. Never have been. So being exposed to a foreign culture and, and more foreign language and things of that sort and the other cultures that are here from other nations. Um, I'm, I'm not your Korea boo. I'm not your wee boo. I ain't nobody's boo, but, but, but boo of my own, okay? <laughs> so to assume that I'm here because I was trying to find a Korean partner like they some damn human form of Pokemon and I gotta catch them all like no um yeah I love Korean music and whatnot and I have a history of flailing and losing my mind over the idol groups and things of that sort both on video and off at live concerts and uh, I'm not ashamed of that because that's how I feel about music and I like the artists who make it um I don't want to go do anything dirty to no young boy or any of that sort. Like, those are severe reaches. Disrespectful and disgusting reaches, but severe reaches. Um, likewise, while I'm out here, I have not been doing anything that I did not say I wasn't going to do. Let me go way back to like 2013. Yeah. I used to have a Tumblr account and at one point in time I was very excited about being able to bring myself as a Christian over here to help and further the efforts of ministry. As a Christian, um, I got a lot of feedback that wasn't positive on Tumblr about that, particularly from a Korean talking about don't bring your, uh, don't bring your mission work and things of that sort over here never implied it was mission work the way that i behave the way that i am not ashamed to talk about my faith have those type of conversations and things of that sort that's fellowship that was going to happen whether or not somebody knew i was a christian or not you can specifically ask and i will tell you with no shame but the way that that message came off on tumblr put a very negative taste in some people's mouths that still lasts to this day and I did what I said I was going to do. So if you would like a spoon to stir your cup of I still can't stand you because I think you over here doing crusadership stuff, I can dunk that spoon tip in caramel or vanilla or chocolate for you if you want to add some additional flavor. I have never done anything that has forcefully imposed upon anyone my faith. There's no need to. I exude it. I don't believe that there's certain je ne sais quoi of perfect christendom there's humans involved religion is flawed the belief system is not in my world you can always send me a private message or a public message on here if you want to talk about it no shame and i don't try to convert anyone that's not my active calling for those who like to harp on some of the terminology of christianity it's not my calling my ministry is just to educate and that's what i do so I came and did exactly what I said I was going to do. And I've met other believers here and I've been uh, able to interact with those who are in possibly questionable cults. And I've learned a lot. Um, so to that one 
blogger who was pissed off with me on there. Um, I didn't do anything extreme that you assumed and to the others who commented, which I never forgot, apparently, because that was six years ago and I'm bringing it up now. When I say I'm going to do something that I don't miss my family. Come on now. I love being away from them. <laughs> That's human. I love being away from people that I have too much in common with and, and spend too much time with because it limits it limits it limits my perspective. But of course, I miss my family and friends. I don't necessarily miss Texas though, and I'm having a real deep issue with uh, with having to go back um, there. <laughs> Because I had issues with, with Texas while I was there. But um, that's not what this video is about. Eh? That I'm connected with, with all these people in the, the writing industry and whatnot. I have connections with. A lot of us are adjacent to one another. But we ain't all chummy. We're not. A lot of us follow each other. A lot of us uh, like each other's social media posts and occasionally retweet them. Sometimes we have the opportunity to be able to interact and uh, hang out and things of that sort. But not everybody is friends. We all respect each other and we all have our own connections to various aspects of the industry where we get more detailed information about things that are going on and whatnot. But like, it ain't all... Uh, it ain't all chummy, but it's most certainly, certainly not hate. Not in the least bit. You will see me, particularly on Twitter, retweet a lot of things from other publications that I respect and um, share the, the information and the perspectives of the things that they have to say. Sometimes I don't always agree with the way it's written. Sometimes I don't even agree with the opinion, but diversity of thoughts helps to create diverse conversations that get the kind of results that we all want to see in the long run. Um, I do believe that there needs to be a level of integrity that is acknowledged by the digital writing environment as a whole. And I'm working on that. Not just myself, but other writers and content creators in some of the other venues and spaces that you read or, or go to. We're pulling together. You'll hear a little bit more about it later this year particularly when I don't have to be the mouthpiece for it because can you hear my English starting to get messed up? I don't know which accent is getting ready to come out. <laughs> but we are actively working on it. Uh, a union of sorts. A club, if you will. That I'm always enterprising. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> I've had to relearn how to make relationships and connections with people that don't necessarily have to benefit my company and the uh, unintentional empire that I'm overseeing. <laughs> um, I just set out and wanted to make content that spoke to a lot of people and it's grown into this this freaking global corporation and that sounds insane coming out of my mouth it almost sounds like it's not real but it is real and um very often when i interact with people my brain instantly goes to how can we work together in business no 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 what's wrong with with just wanting to get to know someone you know um so the assumption that um, oh, she wants to be my friend. <laughs> that's not, that's not always the case. <laughs> that's not always the case. Um, sometimes I do want to see how we can both grow together on a professional side. I'm not as open to being friends with people. And it's not because I've been hurt or anything of the sort. It's just I know the type of attention that I like to give to my friends and that type of uh, interaction it's not for everyone with me. It just isn't. Um, so if you have a business or you are a freelancer and I'm in a space where I can pay you or barter for service and whatnot, I'm going to think of that first before I think about let's be friends because I really do be on that no new friends, no new friends. Like that's not to humor any of y'all. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. No new friends, <laughs> no new friends. Like the recruitment window be about this big on an annual basis. I trust people, I do, until you give me reason to not trust you, but I know what I'm trying to accomplish doesn't have enough space for some of the emotional interactions that developing friendships take. So 
I have my very tight knit circle, circle around that and so on and so forth and so forth. And um, I have no qualms about telling you where you fit in whatever circle that I'm capable of sugarcoating things and that I want my opinion taken for everything. No, I'm not. And no, I don't. A lot of people send me messages publicly and privately, DMs, emails, uh, text messages in some cases, to ask my thoughts about certain things and whatnot. And I often question why, or I will give a very short answer because I don't need my perspective always influencing people. You need to be able to develop your own things. You need to be able to research your own stuff too. If you have questions about where to go look for credible sources and things of that sort, um, I'm there for you, but I'm not always going to give my opinion. Um, I'm just not, uh, it's not fair to always anticipate that from me. I unwillingly became a role model. Then I stepped into accepting that I'm a role model. And in being that I have to be responsible for the fact that some of the things I say will be taken one way by some and another by others. And um, you have to just, you got to pick your, your, your battles about what you want tied to you. Um, likewise, especially what I say on social media, uh, I'm not scared of none of you. You can come at me, bro, if you like. Um, you don't have to worry about ever having receipts. I archive all of my tweets, literally, from when I got on Twitter, uh, Twitter in 2012. Like, if you want some, come get some. So I'm always ready to defend what I have to say. And I'm also ready to put myself on the spot if a change of understanding or uh, perspective happens. And I never have any shame with admitting when I'm wrong. Never. And I don't take the, the whole, I'm sorry, it made you feel that way. If I do say that, I'm being petty with you. More often than not, I'll just say, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, or I apologize. And I'll leave it at that. Those are the things that I could think of off the top of my head. Um, you might have more things that you assumed. And that's fine. You can put them in the comments. Um, I like to see the comments. I always, oh, that's an assumption that we don't see the comments. Heck yeah, social media stuff. We see all the comments that y'all make to influencers and YouTubers and blah, 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 whatever the word is for us right now. Um, I see all of it. I don't necessarily respond to everything, but I see when y'all go back two years into my content and then leave a comment and it's real strange because it's like ain't nobody said nothing in two years yet here you come with a comment that's interesting what is this in my hair these curls were not for me they were for my students and they already falling out i'm ready to go take a hot iron to i mean a flat iron to it and just swipe them on out my hair is my hair I don't know what else to say, y'all. <laughs> Bye, y'all.